Appropriations Committee is SB 808, SB 808. Those in support of the measure. Those in support of the measure. I see no support for this measure. Those in opposition to the measure. Mr. Barret is welcome. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, Sam Perez representing Gun Owners of California. And, and uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to congratulate you on your newly found uh, uh, status on, on YouTube with uh, very few people have been able to accumulate over a million hits in less than, than two weeks on, on with regards to your, your um, uh, press conference. So uh, congratulations on that. What I'd like to do is... Was is, it karaoke or what was it? Oh, no. It was, it was quite uh, entertaining, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, you. You should look it up. You, you'll get a real chuckle. I tried entertaining. Um, yeah. Over a million hits, that's pretty amazing. But briefly, let's go. I'm move sorry, forward. move forward, Mr. Fadas. Sorry, um, it's fine. Uh, we're, we're, we are uh, in opposition to this bill, as, as we have pointed out in previous uh, pieces of legislation carried by the author. That, that, uh, that we believe that there are uh, some significant legal issues regarding this bill uh, with the enforceability and uh, constitutional takings that will occur if the uh, letter of this bill is, is, is followed. Uh, we've had a pretty good success in court in, in challenging uh, some of the legislation, and we believe that, uh, that the constitutional issues of, of taking here in that this bill will call for law-abiding citizens who own a, a legally owned uh, private property um, to make changes to the property that are impossible to make, and therefore they would be not denied the use of their legally possessed, legally purchased uh, property, and, and that would be a, a violation of the Constitution. Uh, for this and, and the fact that uh, we believe that this bill will add more cost to the state by making things that are already illegal, illegaler, if you will allow me to use that term. Um, all of the uh, uh, violations of this law are, 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 when used for criminal purposes, are in addition to crimes already committed, and therefore we do not believe this law is necessary. So for this and many other reasons, we believe it will be an immense cost to the state that is unnecessary. We oppose SB 808. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, opposition. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members, thank you for this opportunity. Sean Doherty from Wild Horse Consulting on behalf of the California Association of Federal Firearms Licensees. We have serious concerns and reservations with this measure as it's drafted, uh, the amendments that came out of public safety, and stand in opposition due to that. Uh, one of our first concerns, and, and many of these are expressed in the letter of opposition that we sent to the committee and to the vice chairman, but one of our major concerns is this bill calls for a retroactive serialization of all home-built weapons, firearms, back to 1968. We're talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of firearms that have been constructed at home since 1968. The first problem with this is the bill doesn't set forth any type of outreach program notifying these lawfully possessing firearm owners that they now may be in violation of the law and potentially felons. There's no provision, no mechanism in this bill to do that. Furthermore, from an appropriation standpoint, there's no funding for such a massive outreach program that would absolutely have to be necessary in order to, for this bill to be enforceable. Second, while the bill does call for the Department of Justice to set forth a program by which they would go, go about issuing serial numbers, it doesn't address what would happen should tens of thousands of hundreds or hundreds of thousands of home-built firearms get presented to the Department of Justice which in, within a very condensed time frame. Imagine the backlog and the overload that DOJ would have if hundreds of thousands of law-abiding California citizens come to them asking for serial numbers on their weapons dating back from 1968 to 2016. It's a massive undertaking. Additional agents would have to be hired, computer programs would have to be created. You're almost creating an entirely new bureaucracy just to make up for those hundreds of thousands of permits, or seal numbers rather, that would be requested. And then again, there's no funding mechanism in this bill to accommodate that. So we're essentially, hand, essentially handing the Department of Justice a new program and a new enforcement without giving them the tools and how to do it, nor, most appropriately, the money and how to do it. Second, a more of a policy standpoint, there are a multitude of guns, the 1911 A1 handgun, as well as a 30-odd-six, 
or even the Thompson submachine gun that A, are, were constructed prior to 1968 and are still being constructed today that look almost identical to the way they, they existed prior to 1968. How is a law enforcement officer supposed to identify whether a gun is illegal under this law or existed prior to 1968? There's no way for them to do that. So what they're essentially going to have to do is arrest the individual, who most likely would be a law-abiding citizen, confiscate his private property, and then conduct a metallurgical test on the firearm, most likely destroying it, to determine when it was created and what its age was. Now we have an issue of a private citizen, a law-abiding Californian, falsely arrested, their private property falsely taken and destroyed. Have we contemplated the civil suits to local county and state governments, not to mention the law enforcement agencies that may come from this? If we have, certainly SB 808 hasn't addressed that. Additionally, I'm going to have to ask you to sort of wind down. So absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Thank Additionally, how do we address the firearms that do qualify under the Curio regulations by the ATF? One such gun could be the Russian-made SKS, which can be made at home and does fit under the ATF guidelines as a Curio weapon. These weapons would be exempt from this bill. While we understand what Senator DeLeon is trying to attempt with SB 808, unfortunately this measure falls very, very short of accomplishing the goals and creates a massive new program that is completely unfunded and would put law-abiding Californians in jeopardy of being convicted of a felony without even knowing that they're breaking the law. For these reasons, we stand opposed and ask for your no vote today. Right, thank you, thank Mr. You Chairman. Any other opposition to the measure? Seeing none, any questions or commentaries uh, from the members? Uh, also seeing none. Uh, if I could just, yes, Mr. I, th I think there was a good point raised in terms of the, um, the fiscal impact, in terms of how, how would this be implemented? Uh, no comment. I waive presentation, Mr. Okay. Gaines. All right. Very well. Thank you. Any other questions or commentaries from the members? Mr. Pro Tem? No. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, without objection, we will move uh, this measure to the suspense file.